Have you added a menu to your game, but you want to know how to do selections, whether that's integers or text-based selections? Well, keep watching and I'll show you how. Good day, gamers. I previously shown you how to add a menu to your game, but you might also want to add selections to some of those menu items. So today I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, since I've released the previous menu video, GameMaker has released version 2.3. That introduced a lot of different changes. One change being we are not just limited to two dimensional arrays, but we can now have multi dimensional arrays. Basically, what that means is previously we had declared our array like this, but now we can just declare it as an array of an array. So I've gone ahead and changed these to be arrays of arrays. So this is one array and this is an array of that array. So essentially we have multi-dimensional arrays now. Now you can go and change yours to look like this now. And there's also a change in the step event because the array length 2D function is being deprecated, which means that there's a chance it will be removed from GameMaker in the future. So instead of using this function, we can now just use array length and we can get the length of any multi-dimensional array. And in this case, we want to get the length of the submenu. So we just write it like this. Now there's also a change in the draw event because in the draw event previously, we were using the same function array length 2D. So now we're doing the same thing. We're just getting the length of the submenu array. So there are the changes to the functions. I've also made a few changes to the menu here. I've now got a sound a music, a subtitle and a text speed, just because these are the examples I want to show. I'm not using these previous ones that uh, we had before. So other than that, that's the only changes I've made. So the first thing I want to do is make things a little easier to read. So I'm going to add some macros and the macros will help us to know which menu we're in. So macros have various use. I'm going to use the macro in this situation to create a word in this case, main to represent a number. And what that's going to do is make it a little bit easier to read what's happening with our menus. I'm also going to create another one and I'm just going to call this settings. So I'm going to give that a value of one and we're going to change this one here to be settings as well, just to make it a bit more consistent. Now, because we now, whenever we use the word main game maker will substitute the zero. So here I'm going to type in main and that will let me know that this is the main menu. It just makes it easier to type and we'll take a copy of settings and we'll use that for the value of one. Now it's just a little bit clearer now which menus we're talking about. So we can do the same thing over in the step event. So if we scroll down and we look at our cases here, when we are at case zero, which is the main menu, this will be main and down here, this will be our settings. So we don't need to hang on to these. And this is when we are going to our settings. And here we are going to settings. And this will move us to the sub menu of settings down here. Uh, and we've got all this set up correctly. So when we want to go back, we're not going to zero, we're going to main. And it's just a little bit easier to read by using those macros. Now you can change these values to be macros as well, but it can get a little bit complicated. I just want to use these ones because they're uh, kind of simple for what we're going to be doing. Let's go back to our create event. And let's work out how we're going to store values that we can then change. So the way I'm going to do it is store the values in a DS map. Now you can think of a DS map like a chest and I might have envelopes that I want to store in that chest. And I write a key on that envelope and I put a value assigned to it. And then I can put many of those envelopes into the chest. And then when I want to retrieve some of that data, I can use the key to find the envelope. And then inside will be the data that I stored. So a DS map is kind of like that. You use a key to store data and then you can retrieve it with that key. So let's go up here and let's create our DS map. Now I'm going to make it a global variable because you might want to access this from other instances. And I'm just going to call it DSM settings. And we say DS map create. Now, because this is quite lengthy to type and we'll be typing it a few times, we can even use a macro to make a shortcut to this. So if I just type the word set and then we set that to be global dot 
DSM settings. Now, obviously, uh, DSM stands for DS map. I like to put that as a prefix to any DS map or DS list variables, just so I know what I'm dealing with when I'm uh, using them. So here with the macro, just make sure you don't put a semicolon on the end of the line. But now whenever I use the word set, that will refer to this DS map. So let's store some DS map values for these settings. So we do that with DS map add, and we put the ID of the DS map. So we're going to write set, and then we need the key. And the key in this case is just going to be a string, and I'm just going to call it sound. And now we store the value for this key. So we want to store what the current sound value is. So I'm just going to set it to five. Now, because we're going to want to change these values, we also need to know the minimum and the maximum that our sound value can be set to. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to store the value in an array. So the first entry in the array is the value of our sound. And then the next entry in the array is another array. And this will be the minimum and the maximum that our sound volume can be. So we've got an array inside an array. This is uh, the index zero. This is index one. So let's duplicate that with control D and I'm going to do store music and we're going to do the same thing. And now that we have those values down here, we're going to change this to an array as well. So I'm going to name this as sound FX just so it, uh, we don't get confused with this sound because this is the key and this is going to be a text field and we want to store this as an array. So I'm going to do open square brackets. We have our index zero entry in the array and now we have the key that we want to use to store this value. So it's going to be sound. And by storing this as text, it enables us to then recall the value from here. So the same thing for music. We have open square brackets. Uh, we leave a space because we want to print this word and then print the value of sound after it. So make sure you leave a space here. We have a comma, and then we have the next element in the array, and it's just going to be the key for our DS map. So it is music. Now, these two entries are going to be integers. They're just single entry integers for the values. But subtitles and text speed are going to be text because subtitles will show as on or off, and our text speed will be some text as well. But it'll be set out the same as this. So let's just have that as subtitles, and then in lowercase, subtitles this will be the key for the ds map same thing here we want text we'll make sure we have a space there and a space there and here i'm just going to use text underscore speed and just close the brackets off so now let's add the ds maps for these so let's just duplicate this and here we have subtitles so this time we're not storing the value but we're storing the index the value is so in this case i'm doing to store zero and the zero is going to be the index of the options that we have for subtitles. So options are going to be on and off. So whereas this is the minimum and the maximum, these are the options and this is the index. So currently this is index zero. This is index one of this array. So the value of subtitles at the moment is index zero, which is on. So this will be what we display when we show it on the screen. And this will be the value that we use elsewhere in the code. So the other thing you do is just close those brackets off and we can duplicate this and we can have text speed. Now I'm gonna set that to one and then we're going to have our entries for text speed here. First one's just gonna be slow, uh, normal, fast, and let's say instant. So once again, with the text ones, we're not storing the value to show, we're storing the index of the array. So this will be one, so this is zero, this is one. So we will show normal as the text speed. So now that we have arrays stored in these menu entries, we need to change the draw event to cater for that. So normal menu entries are just text. So we can check if the entry is an array, and if it is, we have to draw them differently. 
So let's go to our draw event. And I'm just going to get rid of this old one. We don't need this anymore. Now, the first thing we want to check is, is the entry that we're looking at, which is the array I of submenu of menu, is that an array? So is this a selectable menu item or just plain text? So we can actually just say if is array of our menu submenu of I. So if it is an array, then we want to store the menu array. So what that means is we're going to take the current menu array, and that's this, and we're just going to store it in a variable. So var menu array is equal to whatever menu we're on, whatever submenu we're on, and the i of it. So now that we're holding onto this as an array, I want to take this value and use it to get the map value here. So we're going to look at position one of the array, and we're going to get the DS map of that, which is a map array, basically. So we want to get the map array. So var map array is equal to. Now, in order to access a DS map, we can actually just type the name of the map, to open our square brackets, type a question mark, and then type the key that we want to get. Now, the key is here. It is the first position of the array. So it's menu array one. So now in map array, we're storing the value from the DS map. So we're storing all of this. And now that we're storing all that, I'm going to grab just the limits array. So just this part, which is index one. So once here, we're just going to grab this of each part. So let's get the limit array, or it could be a choices array because it stores two different things. It stores either the limits or the choices, but whatever it is, we're going to grab it. So var limits array is equal to our map array and index one. So remember, we had grabbed our map array here, the whole thing. So now we just want index one of that. Great. So we have our limits array and now we can test to see if the first entry is an integer. So do we have an integer here or do we have a string? And that will tell us whether we want to display this as a value or whether we need to use it to get the index of the array. So we need to test this value. Do we show an integer or do we show text? So to do this check, we can actually just say if is real. And it will return true if the pass value is a real. And by real, we just mean, is it a number? So what are we passing? Well, we're passing the limits array and we're passing the first entry of the limits array. Now, if it's true, then we have an integer to show. And we want to grab a string that we can then output. So var string is equal to, so what do we want to show? So we now know that we're here. So we want to show the sound effects and then we want to show this value. So we want to get index zero of our menu array. And we want to get index zero of our map array. So our string is going to equal menu array index zero plus the string of our map array index zero as well. And the reason we do a string is because this is actually an integer and you can't add a string and an integer together. Otherwise you're going to get a, an error. It'll be called a do add error. So we have to convert it to a string first by doing that. Now that we have a string showing what we want to show down here of our draw text, we can actually get rid of this and we can just draw the string. Now, 
in here, if we don't have a real, we can say else. And this time we have a string to show. So that means that we are showing one of these. But it's the same concept. We are showing index zero from our menu array. And then we're showing one of these based on the index here, which is our map array index zero. So we want to say var string is equal to our menu array index zero, and that'll grab our string. And now we want to look at our limits array, and we want to use the index from our map array to pull the correct value. So it's our map array index zero is the index of the limits array. So we're looking at our limits array. And that's all of this. And the index is going to be map array zero. And that is this value. So in our case, this is index zero. This will be index one. It pulls this value. So that will then show that string. Now we need another else in here because if it's not an array, it means it's one of these. That is just a plain text to draw. So get rid of this say else, and if it's plain text that we want to draw, we can just say uh, we want to draw the string, and we say var string is equal to menu sub menu i. It's just a plain string, and we can then do it this way and just have one draw text, and uh, the value is created in here and then passed down here and drawn. Now, that was a huge amount to get through. And I understand it might be a little bit complicated to understand what's happening there. But if you uh, watch it a few times, you see that it's actually quite a good system because we are no longer storing multiple values anywhere. Everything is stored in the one DS map that we need. So let's test it out by pressing play. Now with our menu, if we go down to settings. We have all of the correct things being displayed. We have our sound, our music, subtitles and text all being displayed correctly. Now we have no way to change them yet, and that's what we're going to do next. So what we want to do is use the left and right arrows to change the values. So let's go into our step event and let's add some changes here. So I'm going to have a left where we're checking for VK left and a right where we're checking for VK right. So in doing that, I'm going to actually duplicate this line and make this a horizontal move. And this time it's going to be right minus left. And that's the same concept as the previous tutorial. If right is being held, this will be one. If left is being held, it'll be minus one. Now we need to look at this line because we process the menu when space or enter are pressed. And we need to change this to allow right or left to process as well. But only when we were on a menu selection that requires left or right. Otherwise, the selection will just trigger when we press left or right. So we can make a change here, and I'm going to change this line to this. So therefore, we'll still process it when we're pressing select. Or if the current menu that we're on is an array and our H move is not equal to zero, then we want to process the menu. So therefore, these items. Our arrays, this one is not. So we'll go inside if uh, those menu options are available. So let's go down now and look at our sound and our music, because these are the ones we want to change first. Now we want to use HMove variable, which will have minus one or one in it, to change the value of the DS map setting for sound. And we can do that by just adding it to that value. So our current value is five. So we'll just add HMove to that value. And we can use a clamp to ensure we stay within the limits of what the values can be. Now, since you want to use this kind of thing for many different menus, it's a good idea to create a function so that we don't have to duplicate our code. So down here, I'm going to create a function. Let's give us some space. And we're going to call the function change menu. Now we can pass through the move variable 
and we can pass through the key that we want to change. And that's the DS map key. And what this will do is change the DS map key entry by the move value passed. So now we can just have our descriptions for our move. And this is going to be a real, and it's just going to be which way to move the selection. Then we also have our key, and this time that is a string. And this is the DS map key for this selection. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get the allowed limits for our selection. So we don't move beyond the limits of what is allowed for this particular menu entry. So let's get the allowed limits for this selection. And we can do that first by getting the map array. So bar map array is equal to our set of our key. So that will go and that's going to grab this array. That's our map array. And now I want to get the limits array. So var limits array is equal to the map array index one. So we're grabbing index one right here, or in this case, right here. And now that we have the limits array, we need to do something different because we need different things to happen for the ones that have an integer first or the ones that have an index first. These are two different cases because these ones, we have a limit here indicating the value that this can be. It can be no, long, no lower than zero and no greater than 10. But for this one, the limits aren't defined. The limits are defined by zero and the number of entries in the array. So here, this value can be no greater than one. It's either zero or one. Anything greater is not a valid entry. And for this one, it's zero, one, two, three. It can be no greater than three. So essentially the limit is between zero and the array length minus one. The array length of this one is four, minus one, it's three. So let's put that into practice here. So we want to say, is the first entry in the limits an integer? And we can do the same thing that we did in the draw event. We can say, if is real of limits array zero. So if that value is real, it means that it's one of these two. And the limits are going to be index zero and index one. So if that's the case, our limits are index position zero and one. So var min is equal to limits array zero and var max is equal to limits array one. Else, and these are the cases where we have string entries. So the limits are zero and the size of the array minus one. So var min is equal to zero and var max is equal to the array length of limits array minus one. So now that we have the limits of how far we can move, we can use clamp to ensure that our changing of the horizontal position doesn't go beyond those limits. So basically we can move the selection and we can store it back into the map array. So once we move this value, we need to store it back inside it. So we can access the map array of zero and we'll say we'll set that to be the clamp of our move plus whatever the current value is of map array index zero. So that's this value. We're taking that and adding move onto it. And that we're clamping between whatever that is. And we no longer want to go beyond the minimum, which is our min 
or above the maximum. Now, the other thing we need to add, because we're accessing a map through a variable, we need to put an at symbol here, and that'll say that we want to update the original map. So you need this here when you update a map after you stored it into a local variable. So that's our function done. We just need to call the function and pass the hmove and the key variables to it. So up here under sound, we can say change menu, and we want to pass our horizontal move, so hmove, and we want to pass the key, and the key is sound in lowercase. So let's press F5 and test that out. So now when we go to settings, we can use our arrow keys and we can change our sound effects. And we can't go beyond 10, we can't go under zero. Nothing else works because that's the only one we've set up. And when we exit the menu and go back in, the value is saved. Great, so now that makes it really easy to then add the menu selections as we only need to change one string. So let's take a copy of this, let's paste it here, and let's just change this to be music. And that will make the music menu work as well. So the other things are down here, we can also add the subtitles, and we can add the text speed. Now also, because we've coded it as we have, all of those will just work. The fields should just change without us having to do anything else here. So settings, and we can change the music, we can change our subtitles, and we can change the text. And when we go back in, they were all remembered. So the last thing I want to show you is if you wanted to hold the arrow down and have the value increment automatically. If you want to learn something like that, then hang around and I'll show you how it's done. But before I do that, I want to thank my Patreons who make the content you are watching possible. If you appreciate what you've seen here, you can show your appreciation by donating over on Patreon. This month, I have these amazing and generous legendary Patreons to thank, Kaiser Ho, Andy Kay, Emre Coes, and Tom Frankie. Also, thank you to these generous epic supporters, Sky Devil Palm, Sheldon ENTP, Salvatore Capolino, Dan Half, Gresner, Logan Animation 69, and Edward Lyco. And lastly, I'm appreciative of these rare supporters too. Also, if you're interested in further GML, check out my Tile Platformer course over on Udemy. I've left a coupon code in the description. Now, how do we do rapid key movements by just holding the key down? Well, firstly, let's capture if we are holding the keys down. So back up the top here, let's actually add some lines here to capture the key being held down. So I'm gonna, I've got a right held and a left held, and that is just a keyboard check. So back in the create event, let's create some variables that we can use to indicate whether we're holding the key. So I'm just going to call one time held right and set it to zero. And we're going to have a time held left and set that to zero as well. Now back in the step event, just under here, let's set this up. So this is if we are holding key down. I'm just going to set up some variables. Firstly, we've got a repeat speed. And I'm just going to set that to eight. And that'll be just how quickly it's repeating the increments. And the next one is going to be our repeat delay. And I'm going to set that to 25. So if we are holding right, then what we want to do is say, if we are right, then our time held right variable gets set to our repeat delay. So we're setting it to 25 if we're holding the right key. So if we just press right, we'll set this to 25. And now if time held right is greater than zero, then first thing we can do is we can decrease the value. So time held right minus minus. And if we've been holding it and time held right is eventually equal to zero and we are still holding right, 
Well, then we want to increment multiple times. And we can do that by saying write equals true. And that'll enable us to process our HMOVE. And then we can say time held right is equal to our repeat speed. And by doing that, it means that the next time that this triggers, it's only going to have a speed of eight. So it only has to wait eight steps before it triggers again, where the first time you hold it, it actually has to wait 25 steps. Now, there are other ways to set this up. You could use DS maps and you could use uh, functions. So you only have to create this text once for the left and the right. But it gets a little complicated and uh, this is good enough for what we're doing here today. So I'm going to duplicate that and I'm going to say this is for our left. And this time we want to have time held left. If we're holding left. And we want to take a copy of that and paste it here and here and here and here. And we want to take a copy of that and paste it here and here. So let's test that out. So now when we go to settings and we hold down the key and we get some quick movements without having to press it multiple times. And that works on everything, including the text speed actually. So now you have a pretty cool menu system that would just fit most games. If you want to see something else, leave a comment. And if you appreciated the video, click the like and the bell to be notified if we release another one in the series. So that's all for this one. Thanks for joining me. I'll talk to you in the next one.